And then I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you my, uh, my, my uh, Padlet app. This is what I might be, I might be sending out the link, like I might be creating a, a Padlet. Where did that go? Padlet. Is that like a copy? Is it? Um, the Padlet is a is an app, and I'm, I just discovered it. Well, a couple of other a couple of other online instructors said that they use it to have their students upload their work because it it appears to be a really uh, intuitive sort of thing. I I posted this one yesterday from my from my desktop in the house. And I just dragged it on. You just like you open the Padlet app, and then you can just drag anything in there. And I don't know quite how to do it from a tablet or from a phone, but somebody I invited some people to put some stuff on. Oh, this is from Mary Carrick. <laughs> She's I'm not quite sure why it says anonymous. She's saying it's anonymous. Easy peasy, Rita. All right, easy enough to upload, Nancy. Okay. So then I can take take. You know, if somebody uploads something, I can take this, and right up here is that share button, and I can hit that and open it immediately with my Autodesk sketchbook app that I've been practicing with for for annotating. Oh. So I can put it in there, and then this is how I'm going to be, this is how I'm going to be critiquing during the workshops. I have, oh, let me show you my new scene. This is my new, uh, uh, wait, it's not set up right. <laughs> Something's not working. So it's supposed to be right over here. It's supposed to be the tablet, this tablet view. For oh wait, I know what I was. I know why because I didn't have it on the tablet. I had it on this, which means I have to turn it. I had the I had the phone over here aimed at the tablet. That way. Not only can I, not only can I annotate with the tablet, but I can also just simply point to things, and they can see me actually pointing to the image. This was the one oh. thing I, this was the one thing I didn't like about only showing the tablet mirroring over here, is because because you could see like, you could see if I drew a line, you could see the line being drawn but you couldn't actually see my pen actually doing that. But if I just put the phone camera on the tablet, then you can see me point and, you know, and you and I can like, you know, make this wing bigger or whatever, you know, I can actually draw on it and show what I'm doing. So, that's why I had this uh this new scene set up so you could see me and you could see my view of the tablet critiquing people's work. So that's so pretty cool. Drag, you just drag your your picture of your painting over right onto it? So you um, reduce the size and then drag over? Uh, I'm not sure how to put something in. I think you have to have you have to have an image like in the tablet. Let's see. I wonder if I wanted to uh, Padlet I don't know if Padlet is in here. Pa Padlet. Getting the link. Oh, okay, so I can just put this. No, I hadn't done this yet. I can just take an image off of my, you know, go to an image that's on my tablet. And this is evidently preparing something. But it looks like I ought to be able to put an image into my Padlet. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it maybe it was too simple. Maybe, uh -huh. I don't know. I mean, all these things, you know, that's why I'm like, I give them a couple different ways. People could still email me. So that's the instructions that I put, that I sent to everybody last week. It says they can email me their images. But, oh, what is this? My tablet's going really s slow. But, but anyway, that's what I wanted to try out. Uh, I only have two more days before this workshop starts. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Loading. I might have to play around with that a little bit more. But anyway, these other people didn't have any trouble getting stuff on there, and then I can... Mm. Oh, I did try to... Look, I tried... This This one just showed up. Huh. There it is. 
I don't know why it's in some link. It's in some link. Oh, because probably because it's coming from my OneDrive. It probably has a weird sort of link happening when it's coming from a OneDrive. So are we going to have to download this Padlet for your workshop? You won't have to. You know, well, at this no, late date. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you want to try it, you know, I'm going to, I think, um, so you're in the one that's this weekend? I thought you were in the one that's next week. Next week. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so confused lately. Okay. Yeah. The one I have next coming up on this Friday is for Mid-Atlantic Pestel Society. Yeah. I'm and that one was Carolina. full. But the North Carolina one is starts on Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday, I, I think. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> yeah. So you still have time to figure it out. But I'm going to be sending out, I'm going to be sending out a little note about this just in case people want to use it. And I'll send them a link. I'll make a, I'm going to make a different Padlet place for each workshop. So I'll have okay. them separate it. This is just my tryout. I named it my first tryout Padlet. <laughs> just to test it a little bit. But I think it's pretty cool. Hmm. Can I ask you something about the pastels? Do you usually break your pastels, your pastels down from the, like the block form that you get from Terry Ludwig and that sort of thing? Well, I have my, um, I have my, my Terry Ludwig's all in full size. Okay. Oh, this thing is still turned. <laughs> I have my Terry Ludwig's full size because they're in my big box and this is not my travel box. Of course, travel box is like studio box nowadays, but this is my travel box. And yes, I like to break them into, into little pieces. It's about a half inch. Uh -huh. And that's about a good size, a half inch or smaller, um, you know, like blue earth. This is a blue earth and it's a full size, but the, the, that's all the bigger they get. But I still, I would break that in half if I needed to. My blue okay. earths over okay. here are all still full size, but they're nice the square ones. That's why I love the square ones because the, you know, you can use like this edge to get a little half inch, a quarter inch line, or you can use uh -huh. that edge to get a one inch line. So, so yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh huh. Will, will you be sending a copy out of this? Oh to yeah, us? yeah. Uh, the um, yeah. The usually, it's not like I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I don't like to just take this as it is and send it out. Mm -hmm. I like to I like to tweak it. I'll weed it down to mainly the, just the demo. And any conversation mm -hmm. that pertains to art-related stuff, you know, like I may leave leave in my little view of my pastels and stuff like that. So it usually takes me a couple of days to to get all that done and yeah. po and posted. But I will send it out to all of you that paid the ten bucks. And for my Patreon patrons, I, I post it on there. And any of you that are not on my Patreon, I'll give you a little my little sales pitch. Short. Uh, I'm on Patreon, and it's a really good deal. If you want to check it out, it gets you at the ten dollar level. It gets you all these videos from all of my Open Studio days. Okay. And at the twenty five dollar level, it gets you all the invitations. <laughs> now, how many of these I'm going to be having moving into the future each month? I'm not really sure. Um, like this month in November, I only have four. Uh, because I have these, I won't, like this is the last one I'll have for a couple of weeks because I have those workshops in between and that's going to keep me really busy. And I'm also thinking that some of the open studio days I might market differently as like a little mini workshop or something, in which case I would charge more for those separately than $10. Uh, certainly anything that's going to involve feedback and critiquing is definitely going to have mm. a higher price on it. Um, mm. Sometimes I might market one as a paint along where I'll send the image along earlier, kind of like this, but a little bit, a little bit formatted, a little bit better. Um, and I might charge, you know, a little bit more for those. So I'm still probably by January, I'll have all that figured out. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I'll have to decide, I think mostly I'll have to decide if my, if my $25 patrons will be invited to my mini workshops or not. I, I might have to wait and see. I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to think on that, or I might just keep those completely separate. I don't know. I don't know what yet. Are, but things are, are still the, in evolution. What are the mini workshops. The mini workshops. How yeah, the, they're still in my head. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> but um, 
the idea I had was from the last, the last two Open Studio Days I had turned into paint alongs. I had one that I called a paint along. Yeah. With critiques because I wanted to practice my critiques for these workshops coming up. Uh, uh, okay. And so I just threw in the critiquing for free yeah. as on the virtual yeah. open studio day. It was still ten bucks okay. for anybody not on my Patreon. And I called it a mini workshop with practice critiques. And it was widely popular. I had like, I don't know, six or seven people come on. Yeah. And so I did another one because I, I wanted to continue to practice my critiquing. And a lot of people came to that too. So I'm like, hmm, maybe I have something here. You know, I should do something more like this because it's getting more attention right. than right. just the plain old virtual open studio days. Oh, come watch me work. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but come watch anyway. You know, that's not very, it's not a very good marketing pitch. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm thinking I might have like one mini workshop a month, but charge like 50 bucks for it. And it'd be mm -hmm. at least three hours, be like a half a day or something. Mm. And it would have like my whole process, be a lot like what I'm doing here, except that the, the people paying for the workshop would get my handouts, they'd get my notes, they'd get the photo I'm working on, or they could work on their own thing, and then they'd get critiques at the end. Mm. So something like that. Either that or maybe I'll just jump right in and start doing like a one day a week class or workshop that's like, a, a, you know, four weeks and have it be mm. a lump product and, you know, charge a hundred bucks or 150, or whatever mm -hmm. the going rate yeah. happens to be out there. And then the feedback could be during the week. Like I did that one um, with the, some other place up in Washington recently. And she had a chat group for people to post their pictures and it worked really oh. well. I'm thinking I could probably do that if I just like started a Facebook group for workshops or something. Although I don't know. I've heard people say that's kind of a, a lot of people don't use Facebook, right. or some people don't, or they don't want to, or whatever. So, you know, that would be the problem there. I'd have to figure out where, how am I going to do the feedback in between classes? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, maybe the mini workshops would be better. Or I could just have a series of mini workshops that would kind of go progressively. But then somebody that didn't take the first ones, you know. Well, if you had them online, that they could, you could link them if they signed up for the third. Well, then they didn't pay for it. Yeah. No, that's yeah. <laughs> Well, somewhere in there too, you know, I'm thinking, well, I, I really want to take some of these videos that I've been making from these right. days right, and package it as a product oh. just to sell. Right. And right now I'm seriously considering the, the FASO where I have my website has recently started hosting videos like for sale. So you can oh. put your video up there and sell it. Okay. And I think they have, oh. they have like, oh subscription type workshops, classes that they can sell, you can sell. I was kind of reading up on that. Um, a lot of it is still like over my head. I don't understand how, you know, but, but I'm, I'm researching and I'm, I'm learning some stuff slowly. <laughs> yeah. If I could well, say that, if I could say that ladies, if, if you were at the beginning, you would know that she did, uh, Rita showed us how she does the framing and gave me tips that I haven't <laughs> ever seen. Uh, she's done, oh, she's yeah. done cameras, uh, you know, how to light things, and and huh? it, it's you know, she it's not just painting sometimes, and and did the computer too, how to how to uh, enhance your photos. Oh, was that all today? Was it? No, no, that was like months ago. <laughs> oh, okay. But, <laughs> but, still, yeah, but still, those tapes will be or are available. Yeah, uh, I think the framing one I still haven't done. Uh, yeah, part of me hopes that I don't have very many Christmas holiday portrait commissions from clients mm -hmm. because then I'll have more time to catch up on all of my videos, video editing <laughs> and have time to get them up. Mm -hmm. But, but I did do, I did do the framing one. I think, I think I, I did. did. I, I think, think I did do the framing one and, and posted it. Cause I remember thinking, am I going to put this, am I going to make this one public or I'm going to make this one uh, uh. unlisted. And I did make it unlisted just for patrons. Cause it has a lot of really valuable info on there. So for ten ten dollars a month, which you can stop at any time you want, you get all of those videos with all of that information. And Linda's not getting any cut for being no. my promoter. <laughs> I'm in love with Rita. <laughs> yes, as we all are. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you all for coming today. This was a lot of fun. Thank and you. Thank I might you. have a client that I might have a client. I'm going to show him this. He's, yeah. He's, he saw the underpainting a while back, and he's like, oh. "Have you painted that one yet?" I'm like, not yet. So I'm going to show him this one. Most, most of your paintings, well, that one's fairly small. Yeah, six by eight inches. Six by eight. 
So And is it on pastel paper? It's on a gator board. Oh yeah. So, yeah, gator board. So that's what I usually use because it's so convenient and you can just put the glass on and pop it right into the frame. I'd have to worry about any extra backings or anything. Okay. Pastel pa paper you can't wash off though, right? Correct. Well, it just depends what kind of paper it is. Most well, of those you sanded. Are. Let's say you are. Oh, you are. You can wash off. Oh, oh yeah. Darn, I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, it's a sand. It's the sanded surface, and <laughs> okay. you know, depending on what you underpaint with or if you underpaint, you know, yeah. the pastel. You can just wipe the pastel right off. Um, it'll. It'll probably wash off a little differently than this stuff because it's a different sort of sanded surface. Okay. It might, if you use like a rag, the rag might, I don't know if it'll catch on the surface because yours is pretty darn gritty. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you just dab at it with a really wet cloth, you could probably lift up most of that. Oh, well, great to know. Yeah. In fact, can you, sorry, use any kind you of might cut. Huh? With that kind, can you use any kind of underpainting with the board that you're? With the gate of well, yeah, because uh, what I have on here initially is one layer of my the acrylic underpainting. I mean, the acrylic primer. Um, like here's a piece that here's a piece that's not cut down yet, or just oh. you know a, a scrap piece from some other, and it's the gator board, and it, it comes like this on both sides, and then I prime one of the sides. This has a single layer of the gold mixture that I like to use. So if this is an acrylic product. Once it dries. It's on there. It's not going anywhere. And, okay. you know, the only way to get that off would be like with sandpaper. <laughs> right. But, uh, yeah, so. Um, How do so, you yeah. get your texture? So that's not rough. It is kind of. Well, I, I, I apply my primer with a little sponge, piece of sponge. Uh -huh. I'll dip okay. this in the primer and I'll just slap it on there and start going like this and I'll spread it out across the whole okay. board. And so you see like areas here where it might have overlapped or started to dry as I was spreading it out. And so you see like this gets like a different different sorts of almost like a stucco sort of pattern, which mm -hmm. I kind of like. It's got that randomness to it that can be nice. And then I'll just do my drawing then on this this layer and then I'll finish my underpainting on top of this. And the gold okay. color, since the gold color is mixed with the pumice gel or the pastel ground, it's very transparent. So it'll get a little darker like this. This is, shows you how another layer will go on and it might have gotten thick or started to dry before it was spread out. So it gets a little darker like this each time you apply another layer. So I'll apply like two or three more layers of the gold within my underpainting where I want those values. Mm. And then oh, I'll okay. and then I'll do the terracotta color, which I hadn't gotten I hadn't gotten oh. to telling you about. This. this is my darker color of my underpainting. Oh. So the gold the gold doesn't get this dark. Oh. The gold really only gets like this dark. And then you add the terracotta into the darkest areas of the image. What's that called? It's a it's an art spectrum product. It's art spectrum multimedia and pastel primer. And it comes in different colors, and it's more opaque. So, like, if you put two layers of this on, it's going to be flat terracotta without any transparency. If you put one okay. layer on and spread it out real thin, you can get a little bit of transparency out of it, a single layer. But, yeah. So here, like, for instance, here, uh, Roman, you, did, you came on didn't see my uh, how to underpainting, but this, this is my last underpainting from the batch that I was doing. So this you can see, like like right here would be the single layer of the gold primer that was already on the board when I started. And then here would be a second layer. Right right here, the second layer, or like back here, be the second layer of the gold. And then um, I do have a third layer of gold in there, but I also have washed in, this is like a watered down terracotta that's across the shadowed side of the face. And then this is more of solid terracotta. Here mm -hmm. and here. So I, I do like this whole value scale underpainting with these two tones. Okay. And then I do my pastel on top. So this is kind of like what this one looked like before I put pastel on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I noticed, Rita, when you, when you did that, when you took off part of that horn, I said, wow, I love the way that that blurred it. Like if you wanted to have um, loose blurred edges or, or 
you know, oh, yeah. focus out. You know, it was awesome. Yeah, a lot of that I do, like, with landscapes, I usually end up doing that somewhere because <laughs> if I get fussy or tight, which can happen really easily, <laughs> I'll just take, I'll just water down, like, the foreground grasses or whatever. And then as it dries, I'll be thinking, like, whoa, that, I don't, that's all it needed was just that. And, you know, there's a lot you can do just by experimenting and trying mm -hmm. things and seeing how it looks. I, I've been obsessed with the foam on getting just the right thing. And I found this on Amazon and you can see it, it's made to pull apart. And oh yeah. Little, and it's great. I, I'm yeah. so happy. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much what I use. And I've, I'm still, I haven't actually bought any of that pick and pluck stuff yet, uh -huh. but um, well, I did. I did actually, when I went to Canada for a workshop, I ordered some and had it shipped there. So I'd have it when I got there, but but the ones I've been using are from the inside of the art shipping box, the Airfloat art shipping right. box. I'm still, I'm still using those pieces. But yeah, but that's my that favorite. You use terracotta, right? I use it for both. Yeah, I use it for both, and I'll chop it into little, like I'll cut this in half, into a little wedge shape, and then I'll use the wedge. Okay. I don't have my scissors over here, but yeah. Okay. I like various, just... various foams. Like this is a piece that's a little bit. This is not the same. It's a little bit firmer. Uh -huh. And I really like this foam. I don't know where it came from, but it's not perforated, <laughs> so I have to cut it into pieces with scissors. Uh -huh. But it's a lot. It's a lot firmer than you probably can't see on camera. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but yeah. but it lasts longer. Uh -huh. and, it, and plus, it it lets you it lets you get the details a little bit better because it's not so soft and flimsy. You can so, buy makeup sponges at CVS in a bag. Yeah, I haven't actually tried makeup sponges. I've had some yeah. workshop students that have used them. Um, I I don't know if the foam part yeah. would be like the little tiny holes inside the foam are very dense on the makeup sponge. Yeah, right. so they probably would apply the primer in a different way than this. It has the more of an open open cell foam. I don't know what they call it, but all I can say is that nowadays when you everything almost everything you get in your household comes through the mail. <laughs> Just keep an eye out for what the packing material is because, <laughs> you know, like my husband gets engine parts and stuff all the time. And sometimes it's shipped with pieces of foam. Really? Huh. Yeah. And you never know. Yeah. What, so I keep like, and a lot of times it's like electronics, electronics <laughs> will come packaged like with very, sometimes really nice foam around them. <laughs> and so take a look at the foam. Fun. You can use a brush, though, too, right? You can use a brush, yeah. 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 You, just, you just don't like to clean brushes. I don't like to clean brushes. <laughs> Plus, brushes will just make me get... It's hard for me to get loose with brushes. I like getting loose. If I use a brush, I'm going to get way too tight. I shouldn't say that, you know, because someday I might want to go back to some oil painting. And if I, if I say that too much, then I'm going to be too tight in my oil painting. So just say yes, I can be loose with a brush, but I prefer to use a sponge. <laughs> well, I'm gonna sign this, and then wow, it's almost four. No, it's not almost four. It's almost three. I need to change my clock. <laughs> almost four. <laughs> thank you, Rita. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for coming. I only had one lady that didn't come, but oh well. Okay. Standing in line, folks. Take care. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you.